Hey everybody, thank you for listening to Filling in the Gaps. Be sure to check us out on our social media pages, at Filling in the Gaps. From there, you can get updates on show releases and anything special we may be doing. Sit back and enjoy the show. Should be a lot of fun. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Filling in the Gaps. For those of you who might be new, Filling in the Gaps is an hour-long episode where myself from Ohio and my good friend Cam from down in Texas take two D20s and roll on a random list of themes and scenarios. The point of it being that at the end of the episode, hopefully the two of us have brainstormed and tossed out enough ideas to give you a spark, just a little bit of a spark, to start an idea that you can use for your next game night. Now, in the past, we've had different scenarios such as a haunted mansion or a runaway train scenario. Uh, Last week, we had a doppelganger at a wedding. We don't know what the scenario is going to be this week, but hopefully it'll be something that you guys will enjoy. Cam, speaking of enjoyment, uh, our Discord has been awesome lately, and there are some other things you want to go through as well. I'll go ahead and let you talk for a little bit. Um, absolutely, guys. First and foremost, Molly, thanks for setting up that Discord. It's been a Molly. godsend. In, in, yeah, in a, in a lot of ways. Hope you're enjoying France, by the way. Um, but the big thing is, is that the Discord has provided us an opportunity to really have some pretty cool instantaneous communication mm-hmm. with y'all. Uh, we've I've noticed that Wonder and and I think it's either Joel or Sol or Joel. I can't pronounce it. it's Swedish, so I'm trying my best. Please just send. Correct me if you can, but um, y'all showed up this week in the Discord. We have we just have some really cool conversations around our supplements, uh, different ideas for scenarios and themes, just the basic, you know, more or less episode conversations. Mm-hmm. We have all that over there, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. I highly recommend that y'all jump into that. It's a great time. If you don't, you always still have our subreddit options uh, as well. Our subreddit always has some kind of conversation going. That actually brings me to uh, pointing out Bears Driving. Bears Driving, you've been uh, a lot of fun to uh, sort of just more or less interact with on on the subreddit. You've just been uh, sort of like a a note of positivity, especially for myself, uh, just to see you go in there today, for example. And you said, ah, it's a shame that no one's even posted in here. It's sort of a travesty. It it, it cracked me up quite a bit. We're just happy to to be able to communicate with you all and have a, a fun community to deal with. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, Rich, I've got some great news. We have yet another review on our quest for 25. hey Actually, we have a, we're on a quest for like a billion, but 25 will do for 25 the 25 will get us a giveaway. Yes. Um, also, you know, guys, just to let you all know, reviews are absolutely extraordinarily helpful when it comes to iTunes. I don't care how arbitrary and proprietary it is when it comes to how they split it up amongst countries and stuff like that. It definitely helps. It also helps us understand how we're doing and how, mm-hmm. how you like it, you're liking what we'd provide. But iTunes user Big Ben T uh, wrote us a five star review, Rich. Ooh. He said he, he called Ooh. us one of a kind. Ooh. He said, if you are a DN, a dungeon novice, for those who do not know, learning the ropes, I think this is a great podcast for learning how to write stories as well as keeping your players engaged. This is also great for the DMs with more experience. There are some days where it's just hard to come up with something fresh for your group, Mm -hmm. and it's helped me out a lot. Keep up the great work, and may the dice rolls be in your favor. Oh, Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Ben, you sound like a real nice guy. He is a real nice guy. I actually See, I actually know Ben. Um, he used to live up in my neck of the woods, and then he moved away because of work. Uh, found himself a wife, too. Uh, he's doing great. But uh, Ben's really still a guy. Ben, thank you so much for the review. I love just getting yeah. to talk to you and like hear about how your own personal writing is going for that session you're getting ready to run uh please keep sending us ideas uh ben's actually had some really good constructive feedback for the show so i really appreciate you man i miss you i miss you so much (laughs) and you know what i miss you too ben i miss you as well (laughs) it's really cool to have like a friend like that though yeah be able to sort of bounce those ideas off of and just have someone physically uh you're 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 a thousand miles away from me so Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more difficult for us but and we hate each other um, we just do it because it's a it's strictly professional and and the money i mean exactly we've actually had a huge fight on episode three and ever since then it's just been you know yeah and that time that we got in that fight but then got into a gang war and brought our mics Mm -hmm. into the cars yep and then drove and met up 
on episode seven. Dude, that amazing. I yeah. exactly. I don't even know if I can go there right now, but <laughs> I, I don't think I can. It brings up too many bad memories. Speaking of going somewhere, uh, today I went somewhere. I went to our local uh, comic book store that also represents. Ooh. They were running D. They were running some D and D games tonight. It was so fun to see some of those people out there laughing and having a great time. Um, but I bought myself the Monster Manual. I'm tired of looking at PDFs. Yeah, dude. And there's something I always do. When I buy a new book, I always read the last three to four words, oh. specifically three most of the time, of of a book. And I'm looking back at the dungeon manual, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to read these off because I think this is sort of like a little nugget that the guys at Wizard of the Coast left for everyone. Okay. Uh, you ready? Are you ready? Yep. Shall we roll? <laughs> oh, dude. Dude, you totally had me go. I, I'm like literally, I'm in the index right now, and I'm looking at 310 Zombie 316. I'm like, what the heck? Where is he? Okay, yes, of course. Like we said, okay, you totally, okay, like we said earlier, uh, Filling in the Gaps is based off of Cam and I taking our 2D20s and rolling on a chart of 20, uh, actually mostly at this point, uh, ideas given to us by members of our community. Um, some of these things on the list are Tundras, Mayan encampment, Alien Invasion, Recovering an Artifact. So, Cam, whenever you are ready, we can roll and figure out what the rest of the episode is going to look like. Let's check it out. And I'm doing themes this week, and you're doing scenarios, right? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. 14. Ooh, like okay. All right. The, I, I read last week. You read this week. Okay. What was yours? Mine's a five. Five. Okay. So, this week, we... Oh, I like this. This yeah, week, this is interesting. the uh, the theme is an active volcano, and the scenario is a decathlon. Uh huh. So. Active volcano brought to us by Molly. Thanks, Molly. And the decathlon brought to us by Bro Diesel. Thank you very much, Bro Diesel. Seriously, thank you guys for the recommendations. But also, these roles are also brought to us by our fantastic sponsor, Libris Arcana Dice, or Libris Arcana Dice. That's L-I-B-R-I-S. Make sure to check out their website, specifically if you guys like dice and random things, which if you're here listening to the show, you probably <laughs> like both. Now, here's what they actually offer. You can actually order a monthly subscription where every month they will send you a random set of seven dice and a bonus dice. Or if you want to get more bulk over time, you can order a uh, a uh, quarterly. A quarterly. Yes, thank you, Cam. As always, I got you, man. Um, got you. you can order a quarterly subscription where you'll all where you'll actually get sent three sets of dice. Each of those sets, including seven dice. Now, here's the thing: if you use our promo code F. I T G for filling in the gaps. They will give you 25% off your first order, which you could use on that single set of dice. Or if you're smart, you can use that for those three sets of dice. So make sure you guys check them out. Libris Arcana dice, Google them, you'll find them and you'll get some awesome dice. Now Cam, going back to our theme and scenario for this week, active volcano mm -hmm. and decathlon. What's the first yeah. thing that pops into your head? Active Volcano is exciting to me because it's like an impending sense of doom. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also some renewal that sort of pops into my mind. I think okay. when I think of Volcano, it's like a, it's like sort of burning away the old to begin with the new. Yes, right? and it's almost like a uh, like a theme of creation for me. And so, I think if I'm if like sort of if, if I'm just rolling down the hill right now. Uh, I think of the decathlon as like a yearly, uh, a yearly sort of event Ooh. built around built around the eruption, an annual eruption of a volcano that you know continuously adds to an island or something to that nature. So that's sort of what I was thinking about. Yeah, actually, I think I've heard somewhere. I think it's from Overly Sarcastic Productions on YouTube. Uh, make sure you guys check them out. They've got some great, uh, great. Uh, videos on both actual history but also some history of mythology as well and where it comes from some stories you might not have heard but one of theirs was actually about hawaiian uh gods and goddesses and i think what, oh, what wow. yeah one of their deities for volcanoes was actually um so you think of volcanoes and i think in western contexts when i think of volcanoes i think of just destruction i think of like right. i think of 
like a magma creature. But actually, right. uh, in, in Hawaiian and in uh, other um, island cultures, they would sometimes look at their Hawaiian, you know, the goddess representing um, volcanoes was actually, like you had said, the goddess of both. She had a fiery temper and she would be destru- uh, destructive, but she was also the goddess of new life and rebirth. Right. Because after that volcano, the minerals in the soil afterwards would be great for new crops growing. Um, so right. I think that's really interesting. And I love the idea of there being this race or this – this. I think it not even just a race. I think of like a whole festival built around this mm-hmm. thing. And the race is what your players can participate in. Um, right. Two things. One, one quick thing. I think is there a difference between an active volcano and an erupting volcano? Not every – like to use the logic correct. sentence, yes. not every yes. active volcano is erupting, but every erupting volcano is active. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. So it doesn't have yeah. to be that it's like, oh no, this island's gonna be destroyed, um, but it could just be. No, it's not all doom and gloom. No. Gotcha. Cool. It's, cool. It, cool. It, it, because a, a, an active volcano, excuse me for dropping my book on the table, um, an active volcano is is cool because it's 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 always moving mm-hmm. and it's definitely. I mean, it's def- and I, for lack of a better word, it's it definitely active. It's it's definitely when you walk up, you're seeing the motion of this volcano. You're seeing things moving about and shifting, and portions of the mountain moving around and things to that nature. But it's it's it doesn't have to be all Mount St. Helens or anything where it's just a massive explosion and death and d- destruction. That's I actually doom and think, gloom everywhere. Right. I actually think that this would be a really cool side quest for. Uh, for like as a, as a story as a whole for your players because it's you know it's a, 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 a diversion of sorts like a, you know? it's a good refresher session like you've just because yeah. c- you do need that dms let let it be said out let it be said i think yeah. that you have to understand that your your group sometimes i think the tendency is just to go 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 and not to give your players that sense of like you guys have been doing good celebrate like take a week go i i call them shopping days you gotta have days where after you do something big after you get back from the underdark you can give your players the ability to go (sighs) hey how's everything else going in the world before you know the next assassination or quest line starts um in in other words like it's it's giving your players the the low or not even a low i guess would be it's like the the slow to to appreciate the fast exactly Uh, it's yeah it's that it's that that direction and you're still giving them competition because the decathlon gives us so many fun little activities that's 10 activities yep at the very least right there that we can build upon and if you're crown champion you can provide your characters now um, gold or items and stuff like that exactly and you have to have that i think i think we could build this whole this really cool festival around everything and have even the decathlon but other events and just different things going on that your players can interact with and make it seem fun um i know Mm -hmm. that i think it was critical role um for their first for before their first session um i don't know too much of the history but i think i remember them talking about there being some kind of harvest festival or some kind of winter festival that they were at. And it actually was a cool way of them introducing a villain, but not necessarily through an encounter, uh, just through mm-hmm. just through them hearing about this festival. Now, two things I wanted to say. I keep thinking of this episode of Pokemon. Um, there's an episode of Pokemon. It's like in the <laughs> it's in the original it's in the original series, uh, where they are I think they're at the Safari Zone, and I just remember that there was this race taking place. And the race went through all these different environments and you pick like one Pokemon to ride and then you ride that Pokemon through like all these different environments like uphill, downhill, rocky roads, forest, plains, like straightaways where fast Pokemon can get ahead, uh, jumping over rocks, swimming up a waterfall or across like a raging river. And it just that keeps popping into my mind because if you're doing a decathlon with with a volcano nearby, I think that locale needs to be like you said, very, like, it's not just all rocky and then there's some lava. I think you have to have, right. like, the cliff with, like, the jungle on your left and, like, the cliff on your right and then, like, this thick this thick overgrown path that you're having to, like, go across. Um, right. The other thing is I actually Googled and found, found out uh, the name of the goddess uh, in Hawaii is, uh, I think it's, forgive me if I'm wrong, 
uh, Pele, or P-E-L-E, Pele, Pele, I think it is. Um, she's the goddess of fire and volcanoes, and she is the creator of the Hawaiian Islands. She is also known as she who shapes the sacred land and is known, so, um, and that's known to be said in Hawaiian chants. It's, it's, it's Moana's story from Disney's Moana. Yes. That's, that's, that's who it is. Because I, so. I have totally seen Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm married. I'm not afraid to admit the kind of things that I've watched. I, no, you know, I, I. It's one of those things. I wish I could have seen Moana. You know me at this point. I just don't watch movies. Oh yeah, yeah. That's funny. I, that's funny. I, I, I was like expecting. I was like, it's a Disney movie. Rich has actually seen this for sure. No, nope. you know, but <laughs> nope, definitely. Not. Yes, okay. I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but that's essentially. The I shouldn't say that. That's I've seen parts. Available. I've seen at least a fourth of it because I was taking care of kids while I was playing it so you know i you know what i found is that while watching movies watching only quarters of them um is by far the most effective method to watching a movie. that's what i've heard too a lot of people have said that but okay so i've been talking for a while kim what else are you thinking of well um i actually haven't i have some ideas so since it's a decathlon Mm -hmm. decathlons are broken in the you know obviously there's there's races but there's also you know strength competitions there's um there's a test of skill there's you know all different types of portions of a decathlon now you know okay I mean? now are there because here's the thing i'm kind of a chubby guy who cannot run very far so if you know something about a decathlon i'd love to hear you talk about it for a little bit because i know very little okay so looking up decathlon on on google right here mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. so i was definitely an athlete but it's an athletic event taking place over two days in which competitors oh, take part in the same uh, prescribed 10 events, 100 meter dash, long jump, shot put, high jump, 400 meter dash, 110 meter hurdles, discus, pole vault, javelin, and the 1500 meter run. And so over the course of those two days, these athletes um, will sort of individually go through each of these events. And then at the end, they will tally up all their you know placements and whoever is the best of those 10 events wins. That's the decathlon right there. Cool. And so, um, dude, this is going to be so fun. Can I just say that? That's what I'm saying. It's like, like, there's so many options. So it's like, you do these little cool things and each of these, you can introduce all these different competitors, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. You can introduce long-term friends, potential, long-term potential friends to your players. Now, this is a great, uh, and if you're if you're listeners of the Adventure Zone, it's what they call the Lunar Interlude. It's l- legitimately smack dab in between their arcs. Each of their arcs is sort of punctuated by an, a Lunar Interlude, as, as Griffin would call it. And it's the gather your thoughts moments. And these exactly. are really great role-playing times uh, for, for your players. And so, you would be surprised, too, about how enjoyable nights like these can actually be to your players. Like, for any naysayers it's like out a there... a vacation. Exactly. For any naysayers out there who'd be like, I don't know if my players would enjoy this because they're a very combat-focused group. We only ever really want to run combats or dungeons. Let me ask you this. How many times have you been at a tavern or in a town and one of your players says... Or one of your players has started a boxing match or a drinking contest or mm-hmm. has somehow just picked a random NPC and all of a sudden wanted to start competing with them. I think players enjoy things like that. This is a session yeah. built around those little encounters. I, I think right. your players will enjoy the idea of feeling like even though they're still rolling D20s and they're maybe not having combat, that they're proving that they're good at something. They've invested. It's, it's competitive. Exactly. It's, it's truly. That's exactly what combat is. Mm-hmm. Is it's just a moment for your player to shine. Exactly. So if your player is getting that opportunity to shine in other events and different things that doesn't kill things or stuff like that, for sure, there's murder hobos out there. Again, we have to reiterate this: an absolute travesty of a disease, and we are trying to find a cure. We have it's started so hard. all kinds of things. It is. It's really. It is really hard. Yep. But nonetheless. You got those, but at the end of the day, if you satiate that thirst by allowing them the W, the win, mm-hmm. it's it's going to provide them a lot more cool things. So let's start this off then. So we've got the the island itself. This is I, I sort of view this as like almost like a tropical vacation type of island that is experiencing this once in a year or this annual uh, eruption of a volcano. The the eruption happens at the end of the third night, you know, and that's sort of like this moment where everyone sort of sits and watches the proverbial fireworks. Yep. Um, 
and there's feast and these these different events that are happening throughout this time and your players have been invited to sort of go through this decathlon because of you know because you're there they've been yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i mean not not to mention that but they just maybe they you know a reason why they're they're invited is because they're you know they're so awesome at saving the world Mm -hmm. or something like that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um so here's what i was thinking if it's a decathlon you're gonna have you know your players and you can raise and lower that number as you see fit let's let's take for example if we were approaching this game here that we have four players right okay let's add five or six more types of npcs of sorts okay and maybe some types of monsters or not even monsters but uh more or less just like beings that could sort of inhabit these different things. Okay. And one of them that I had already turned to a while ago was the Empyrean. Empyrean. Sort of a her, yeah, he's a uh, like a, a Hercule Hercules type of it, it's an Empyreans are a celestial children of the gods of the upper planes. They are universally beautiful, statuesque and self-assured. So Hercules in other words. Um, and so I thought that would be a really interesting um, sort of creature to have inside this as well. Oh, especially because this is um, – even though this might not be like a holy festival in the sense of that like you're going to have clerics there or pa- maybe paladins. Mm. This is where like you're this – is, this is a sacred festival for your druids, for your rangers, for for this – you know, for these island people. Like where it might not, you might not have your cleric there with his plate mail – and like his golden emblem around his neck. But this is something that I think it makes sense for an Empyrean to be there because this right. is still a celestial event or an event involving yeah. celestials. What page is this Empyrean on? I'm having a hard time finding The Empyrean it. is on page 130. While Rich is turning to this page, I was going to be giving you all a ASMR enjoyable mm. uh, experience. Ah, yes. I Thank hope you. you were enjoying this episode so far. <laughs> Okay, it's found it, nice. and yes, this looks <laughs> awesome. Right? Like, doesn't he fit perfectly? He's wearing a skirt, everybody. So it's it's something like that. But we create a guy like him, or a girl that's also an Empyrean as well. Uh, you know, whomever. I think it'd be and sweet to even... What if this is something... So I like this this idea, and I am not going to speak of Hawaiian culture. Because um, I don't want to offend anybody, and I'm kind of an idiot mm-hmm. when it comes to stuff like that. So, but I think from what I've seen of like Moana, um, I think there's this idea of whereas like in in Western culture, um, we have this idea of, you know, a God being very distant and being being very like like the clock worker who's built a clock Mm -hmm. and now it's going. I feel like in island culture, the gods seem to have this like this day. they, They seem to move, they seem to breathe. They seem to be a part of everything that's going on. What if what if this festival is a time when. This festival, this god actually shows up, and and they're, they're yeah. like like whether it's I oh. I don't think you make it you know Pele or um because that might be offensive to some people. But what if this the D and D god who represents this? What if she actually shows up, um and she's yeah. walking around and even she competes in some things. Yeah. Um. Now now, uh, are gods valuable like in this world and can they lose events? Um. um and other because like here's my question and the re- you sparked something in me and you mm-hmm. gave me some inspiration I've, i wanted to take it either one of two ways the gods that represent different portions of this island sort of come and compete in this decathlon Ooh. Or, or or they judge the decathlon as your players are seeking their favor and seek uh, and like these are island warriors that that are seeking their favor i like the idea of them judging it i also think there there could be instances where like especially if like if one of your players if i don't think there's going to be an arm wrestling competition but if there's some kind of contest of strength and you have that Mm -hmm. one player who's dumped everything into strength like everything they have such a crazy high strength i do think it'd be really cool if you had this scenario where They've wrestled everybody. They've proved they're the strongest. They're celebrating. And then you have, you know, the god who represents strength on the island or 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 rock or the, the god of water or whatever. Whatever is mm-hmm. is the best representation for strength. He shows up and he actually like like 
not full force wrestles this guy, but kind of like a like an expert would wrestle a novice. And it's just playful Correct. and he's just testing his form. And yeah. there's you know, there's a moment where he you know, he still overpowers and wins, but it's he picks up his player right afterwards and he's like, dude, you are you are strong. You deserve this. And he gives You are worthy. Even if it's just a tattoo. Like if it's a tattoo yeah. somewhere on his body, little things like that would be awesome. Yeah, these are these are really cool moments to create stories within these these events to where your players could remember, be like, remember when you wrestled that god? Yeah, and you had this awesome moment. Especially um, if you give him a trinket. I know there was one time where one of my players out of nowhere, one of these days, I had a a god who was pulling the city of trade. Uh, it was a city of just all these boats who had you know right. latched onto this god. The god was pulling them from trade port to trade port. And this one day, my player's like, I want to climb up on one of the chains and just, like, talk to this god. And I was like, oh, shoot, I never thought about what happens with this type of scenario. Uh, okay, yeah, sure, you uh, you do it. And just one mm -hmm. of the, th the, the god talked very vague. He didn't give any specifics, but he did give my player a coin. Just like a, just a uh, nothing, hey, here's just a coin. And my player yeah. used that coin for everything. Like in character really? for decision making, he would pull that coin out and he'd flip it. He'd flip a real life quarter, but in character it was that coin. I never. Yeah. I, I think if you have a god give away a little trinket like that, players will love it. Right. I think that's so cool. So there's like, okay, so let's go through these events. Okay. Real quick. Yep. And I I want to change up some events. So running can happen in one of them, right? Yes. But I want to do some other stuff. So I. I'm looking at these monsters and, and and different beings that are popping through the manual because I'm so excited I get to turn these pages. I know, right? Um, I'm looking at the Were Tiger. Okay. He's holding a, a bow and arrow on page 210. And so definitely an archery competition would be fun. And maybe a mysterious hooded Were Tiger walks up. And this is sort of a known archer from across the, the lands. Mm -hmm. I just, I view each of these little decathlon moments as a grant as you know mere parts to a whole yep. but at the same time opportunities to impress these like very skilled incredible people or things yeah or beings and so you know there's a bunch of different competitors but this archer shows up and they're incredible at this or the shot put there's a a like a storm giant i think it's i think it's storm giants that that are good I can't. I can't quite remember. Um, it's either a hill or a storm giant. It's storm. I, I will. Is it a storm? Could also be cloud. Okay. Well, it could be a little happy cloud. You know. No, yeah. It's either. Cloud. Yeah. A, I was. Yeah. Definitely a uh, a cloud giant would be. Um, you know, actually a storm giant because of the way they look. Because my goodness, they are epic. But like a storm giant takes a boulder and throw instead of being they they're handed the shot put and they set that to the side and throw a boulder and say any man that can match my throw is worthy of this item or something Ooh. and so it's just these these little small moments i like love that, that. I, well i love that idea too of like this is a celebration of what the gods are doing and maybe even the gods like literally do something like, mm -hmm. like with the whole okay, idea of like, I, yeah. like a yeah. with the eruption of a volcano, like there's this eruption and like new life like flourishes. I don't know how that's a hard example, but like with the god of waves is like creating these huge waves or something like that. And there's a there's a festival or a contest that reflects that. Or, or like you said, yeah, this, like I, I you know I just spitballing on the yeah, water, yeah. the water god. There's an object in the water and they're moving it because obviously the water is what they 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 are the water mm -hmm. right yep and they say to the to the person that can catch this you you know receive this this and this Dude. and the, it, and then like the storm giant for example that's sort of like the representation of strength within the island throw the boulder match my boulder throw with just a mere shot put what if um what if the strength contest is going back to the whole water i think water thing what if the strength contest is a representation of the the constant maybe even playful struggle between pele or between you know a, the goddess of land or the goddess of you know sculpting the land and the god of mm -hmm. the sea 
And it's a, yeah. it's a thing of like with two teams and it's like wrestling or it's some kind of one team has to balance. on. I'm trying to think of Survivor, honestly, like things I've seen on Survivor. Like one. Well, this team, is yet again my second time being motivated into uh, American Gladiator. Yes. So I really do appreciate that. Yeah. A lot. But something where it's like it, it, it's two teams facing off against each other. Like one team is trying yeah. to keep someone balanced on something while the other team is trying to push them over. Like I, I'm trying to right. picture like imagine just these all these logs standing up. Um, vertically, there's like mm-hmm. seven or eight, and you have one, and they're kind of arranged maybe in a circle or just kind of thrown around the place. So it's easy enough for the person standing up there to hop over to another one. So there's Correct. one person up there for each team, and then the rest. It's like King of the Hill. It's like King of right. the Hill, but each team has yeah. like seven or eight logs stood up, and one person on each log. And then, yeah. At, yeah. but below that, it's like rugby. And you're just trying to push over the other team's log as your team is trying to defend your logs from getting pushed over. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I like that. That could be where you See, have and a that could be like the, the that could, yeah, it could also be like sort of like a you know because it's a lot of grapple check stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you've also got you know the local undefeated sort of team that always represents the island versus your band of misfits that's trying to protect their logs yep and you know new to the city uh another one that i thought of that i thought would be really cool i think about javelins hunting the the Mm -hmm. sort of the god of hunting uh you know there's a a beast hunt that you can you send your players on and this actually this actually brings me into the beast that we were talking about earlier yep um, which was the, what was that again? The, uh, the, oh, wow. I want to say beholder displacer beast displacer beast. Yes. Which I thought would be really fun to run. So you can present them with these still combat based scenarios, go hunt the, the, the displacer beast, or it's just, there's man, the displacer beast fits the aesthetics really well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many little cool things that can be done with each of those little those little actions that provide your players fun little diversions away from the norm and it breaks up the sort of i guess more or less um monotony even though it's not you know monotony would almost make it sound not fun but does that make sense at all like it's like no you're sort of just breaking up the patterned yeah nature of how D sort of works yep yep i think another thing too i think i love the idea of hunting um, especially, uh-huh. did you mention hunting and capturing versus like killing? Yeah, you could do that. Uh, yeah, I, always think, I, I didn't. I did not actually, but I think that's a better idea because I think that adds a cool twist to it. That's actually something I did with one of my players recently. Is instead of just being like, "Hey, here's a contract to go out and kill this thing," it's like, "No, they specifically need this thing alive," and it just adds that new layer, right. layer of like, "Are we grappling this thing? Are we trying to blind it? Like, how are we bringing it? Are we putting a sack over its head?" It's just that that extra little layer of like, "Huh, how are we doing this?" Um, right, and it just adds to your play. I mean, think about trying to wrangle a, a displacer beast. It's got to be a lot of fun. Oh, because <laughs> it's, great time. it's hopping all over the place. Yeah. Right. Um, now let's add. What about some story? You know, obviously these are some cool little events, but is there some story going on behind the scenes that that could be interesting to sort of weave into this that maybe will sort of bridge us to the next. Uh, arc of sorts you know we do usually always try to have a good beginning and middle and end of things um and i think uh-huh. we get so excited with the middle we kind of forgot the beginning and the end although i don't think we have to have some huge beginning and end um it's good to right. still have something that leans you in and leans you out um i think mm-hmm. the idea of a beginning could just be that whether it's um i, I think honestly whenever this festival is if you have if your players are close to somewhere where this could be taking place I think it's just a cool thing to throw in. Or if, if your players mm-hmm. are traveling a long distance, it could be a cool thing to have them do. If they're in a town and like as a good reward, you could even have like the king as a reward for what they did in the last quest, send them here for like a little bit of a vacation. Um, yeah. Because that could be cool too. Yeah, I, I totally view this as a vacation it had, type of And that could be so fun. Dang. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because it, it's so it's so different than I think how players are used to being rewarded. I think players are used to being rewarded with like, here's your gold and here's your magic item. But to have a King be like, (laughs) like I want you to take, I go here every year to this festival. It's, it's one of the most relaxing times. It, it costs me, it takes this much money to get there 
or whatever. And then you're like, you know what? I want to send your, as a token of appreciation, I want to send your party. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's 100%. Like, I'm all about that as well. I just think that, you know, it's, it is the uniqueness of the reward in and of itself, but it's also these really fun role playing opportunities. I talked about this actually in the supplement that I've been working on right now Mm -hmm. about how there's not enough moments. Sometimes I feel like people maybe feel deficient in one side of, of tabletop role playing games. Sometimes some people are too combat heavy or they feel too combat heavy and they feel deficient in role playing and storytelling Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Whereas some might be specifically based around storytelling and role playing, but never really getting that competitive itch uh, scratched, if you will. Yeah. And so this gives you that moment of saying to yourself as the DM, how let me take you know inventory of how things have gone. Do we need a little bit more role playing? Is it something that I think my players would enjoy? This is something that I think that my players would absolutely enjoy. Oh, me too. Because it's different than diff- different than what they deal with, you know. And it might be a good but s- I spot do, too for you. It, it's a good spot too for you as the DM to say like, if you've never done stuff like this before, where it's like straight up role mm-hmm. play- playing, for you to kind of see like this is kind of role playing light. So it's not like you're throwing them out there on a stage and saying like, okay, monologue, have yourself a little exposition moment. <laughs> but it's them, you know, being a part of these competitions and giving them that little bit of a chance to to role play and then you to see like okay this is something i think my party could handle more of yeah exactly it's just these are some fun little testing grounds ironically sitting well uh, amongst a, a group of of 10 you know 10 different items yep now uh, i something, had an idea oh, from a world building perspective i wanted to run by you. yeah go ahead the uh, leviathan turtle Ooh. being the actual island itself I don't know how logistically that makes sense, but I just thought it'd be really cool. I do like that. How big is the Leviathan Turtle? It's, it's about as big as a ship. That's the problem. It's not like big enough mm. per se to be, you know, a like full on um, world. I mean, or, or country. You could but have it. Thought, you, know. you could have it be though, and this could be something really cool because your players wouldn't maybe mm-hmm. necessarily know it's a it's a you know giant Leviathan lion turtle or whatever it's called. It's a dragon turtle. Dragon turtle, well, actually. Yes. Yeah. You could have it where it's just like this time of year, it always stops by because of how much warmer the water is because the volcano is starting to kind of act, get active a little bit. It just kind of mm-hmm. stops by and chills out in the cool water. And to, to your players, it's just an island. But then all of a sudden you hear like, hey, for this, for this part of the competition, you have to swim out to that lion and then you have or you have to swim out to that island, take something and come back. But make sure you ask the island for permission before you take something, or they right. they kind of wrap it in that kind of like respect of of that island type of thing, mm-hmm. um, right. and then whatever the island says you can take back is you know reflective of you personally. Maybe that's not even part of the competition. Maybe it's just something that they offer as like a personal quest. Like some people go yeah, out there definitely. and do that, and that sits on their shelf all year, and your players are like, "Huh, that yeah. kind of sounds cool." And then you go out there, and you know here comes this huge head that just up out of the water or you just get kind of pulled underwater and you're having that was a phenomenal sound effect thank you i'm not even joking yeah. i was like sitting here and when it de- when you said that i was like wait a second like did rich just like drown yeah like, yeah like, but then there's that, that moment really good sound thank effect you there's just that moment where you're talking with this turtle and you're literally asking like it's making that judge of character and it's giving you like a rock because you're strong or a small plant because you're thoughtful and inquisitive or something like that, that once again, your players are going to feel, feel very much like this is my character. Awesome. Like I do, like I I love this little artifact. (laughs) This guy, this guy gets me. You know, this dragon turtle, man, he just gets me. Um, And then he's got like glasses on and he's like, what's up? It's me. Cool turtle. Cool turtle. Everybody. He pulls his fins up out of the water and he does finger guns. (laughs) <laughs> He's all, hey, hey, hey. Dude, he rolls up. Cool turtle here. He rolls over on his belly. It's literally the turtle from Finding Nemo. It's like, hey, man, what's going on? Um, How old are you, Dragon Turtle? He's all, old enough to be granddad, bro. Yeah, exactly. Like um, but what, so what if, um, going back to the idea of the beginning uh, of this quest, because I don't want to get mm-hmm. too far away from that without forgetting. Uh, I think one thing Correct. we could do to paint the picture of this of this festival 
um, is I think as your players are pulling in on their boat or their air vehicle or whatever, I think they see the smoke from a ways off. Um, or even as they're pulling in, they see the smoke and they're immediately thinking in their heads, oh, here's DM. He's got some emergency here. The volcano's erupting. We're, we're right. going to go and be fighting something. And then yeah. as you guys are getting off the boat, or as they're stepping off onto the shore, they're met instead with celebration. And these people, like, give them a traditional, like, island welcome, or they're just celebrating and dancing. There's yeah. food being cooked. They smell, like, meats and sweet in the air as they're approaching. And your players are then like, what? What's happening? And then they remember it's a festival, and that could be a really cool way of, of like, walking into the scenario. Um, even as, if as they're walking in, maybe there is a, a god who's present and judging a competition um, yeah. in that moment. And you're just like, huh, that's kind of crazy. So that, now, that could be a cool way I, of I'm inspired welcomed. by you. I'm inspired by Ooh, you. Okay. I just want you to know this. And here's why. Okay. So the idea of an active volcano is that there's always potential for an explosion. Mm. Always potential for an eruption. Mm-hmm. So I want to explore that thematically, and this is how. Yes, this is an annual tradition, and every single year this island celebrates this. This gives us this, uh, Rich, this gives us, instead of us just Ooh. doing a vacation episode, this gives us something to work with from an enemy perspective. Okay. Now, you have these different highly powerful beings showing up to this island, and one of them knows something about this volcano that none of the rest do Hmm. and they know how to trigger the eruption they know how to cause death and destruction on this island and that's their ultimate goal through this competition and what and so essentially like if you win the competition maybe you go to the summit and you're allowed to the summit by the gods and that's when they attempt to spring their plan more or less and so I'm thinking to myself, like, how could I take advantage of this if I was a bad guy? How could I make this, you know, something that would be exciting? And that's where I go back to that Empyrean as this, you know, maybe sort of like a this god type of, of being that seems from the outside sort of um, crazy and, and like crazy strong and crazy powerful. But... I'm looking at their their alignment right here, and they're neutral evil at potentially 25 percent of the time. That gives them that that wherewithal. I'm not, I don't care about alignment, as you as you, everyone probably can tell by the fairy dragon. But what do you think about that? Like, what is that something that's crazy? Am I am I out of line on that? No, one? I sorry, I've been quiet because as you've been saying this, I was so I have the Storms Coast the Storm Coast Adventures Guide, and mm-hmm. in the beginning it just has like a little list of like the the Feyrunian pantheon and just different different gods in the pantheon. And as soon as you said, like, what if there is the chance for this? What if, like, part of this festival was, like, sure, and, and maybe this is even what it is, is, like, this festival has been going on for so long. Maybe there's, like, shamans or, like, these, these weathered old women or these weathered old old men who know the true meaning of this festival. And, and they know the true power behind this festival. Um, but maybe to most of like the younger people, that's kind of just like a mom, you're crazy. Dad, like there's no power. It's just something we've it's like it's it's just something we've celebrated for the longest time. But what right. if there is actually power given to these deities? So like what if there's different teams? Like there's the team of the goddess of the ocean. There's a team of the goddess of creation. Mm-hmm. There's a team to the goddess of like crops or livestock and naturally like those those gods and goddesses they don't compete much with each other um or or most of the people are just going to pick kind of whatever they say and they're very good at at one thing exactly so like let's say that this one year at the festival the goddess of livestock wins out over the other ones well livestock's going to be great that year um what if there's also so one of the gods i saw um in this little pantheon uh, list was this one is neutral uh, this god, and it's specifically, I think it's called Kusoth. Uh, it's the god of mm-hmm. fire. Um, 
the, there's there's yes. him, there's these other gods that we could pull off of, and maybe there's even just some people who are competing. Um, if if you needed that kind of pressure, that kind of competition of like, oh, we well, we have to stop this thing from happening. There could be gods. What about this? Yeah, go ahead. What about this? So the god Kusoth, right, is what you call? Yep. Him? Uh, excuse me for interrupting. I'm sorry. No, no, no you, go ahead. Go go go. There no, go go go. Oh, okay. Um, the Imperium. So I, I'm stuck on this Imperium, but here's why. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play with the look of the Imperium as well. Mm-hmm. This god that is the god of, god of fire or goddess of fire. They continuously lose. Mm-hmm. They continuously don't have something that they're very good at, and they have created this celestial child of theirs, this Imperium, to represent Ooh. them in these events. And all this time, there was a balance to the nature and the world with, on this island. And now, through that, this balance is going to be thrown off because of this sort of just like Herculean man yep. that is just this beast that's good at everything. Yep. And it's just, and they know that once they win, the thing that will be bountiful the most on the island will be fire. is fire. Mm hmm. Right? I love that idea. I love it. Because, I mean, it does make some sense that there could be some people who would compete on Team Fire. Um, because there'd be someone who's like, well, fire, you know, it gives and it takes away. But I like the idea of, yeah. to give this kind of flair to that Kusoth is that his mm-hmm. team either never never wins because people don't see the true value of fire. Um mm-hmm. Or his team consistently loses, or no one even like ever wears his emblem at, at. Maybe there's not teams. Maybe it's just it's people are wearing certain emblems, or they're wearing certain paint. It's, rep- it's representations, exactly. It's representations of the, the those things, and he right. always just feels underrepresented. So right. in a and 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 so it fits so well into the volcano thing. It's smoldering. Mm-hmm. It's sitting. It's waiting. It's seething beneath the surface. And on, on the outset, it's calm, it's hidden, it's it's charred and scarred away from the rest of the yep. world, waiting to be waiting to erupt. And this is its moment to do. And something. I like the idea too of if you could even maybe you don't have this Olympian um, or Empyrean. What is it? I, I think I said it wrong. Maybe you don't have him. The Empyrean. Empyrean. Maybe yeah. he doesn't show up. Maybe a whole day goes by in game day, not out of game day. Uh, a whole mm-hmm. in-game day goes by, and it's just celebrating and a few contests and stuff like that. But maybe you hear, you know, you're sitting down with the tribe master, and he's giving you the history of this festival. And maybe he even says, like, you know, over the past few years, um, the the island has been so happy during our celebration that, you know, it started a few years ago. Just these huge plumes of smoke would come out of the volcano, or or at night you could just you can watch. The, the lava spitting into the sky, never enough to erupt, but just enough there as a cell. And he's interpreting, he's interpreting the volcanoes yeah. getting more active as it being happy. And then this Empyrean shows up day two or day three, um, and you find out that they've misinterpreted it. And just like like you said, the you know Kusoth or how, whatever you name this god, whoever it is, he's upset because he feels very underrepresented. And now because of that. He's going to be competing, and if you know if his Empyrean wins, and if he wins the most events at this festival, um, mm-hmm. then he's going to yeah. he's going to bring fire to the island. Because to a god, I mean, yeah, there's gods who understand and really love people, but at the same time, gods are the gods in the deity universe. They're immortal. So if they kill off a generation of people, they're like, yeah, you guys are like weeds. You always come back. Um, so it makes sense for him to yeah. be like. I'm more I'm more interested in your kids kids as kids as kids understanding that I'm supposed to be respected because no one has been respecting me as this god lately. Right. Right. And I I like the idea of this this Empyrean be, Empyrean being sort of sort of a look down the nose type of of individual mm-hmm. that you know say for example in the middle of a shot like and you can introduce them in so many cool ways. I personally the way I sort of to see it is camera behind you know a competitor and maybe like the the stone thrower so like the the god of masonry or god of like you know um earth or the you know or you know the island itself 
they they're very good at you know the shot put mm-hmm. uh, event and one of them's like talking to one of your characters and they're just like and this is how you do it and they're like being real jovial and nice and they throw it up in the air and cameras fall in behind the ball and then all you see is poof, big paul grab the shot put out of the air and start to crush it in its hands yep and and then then you get this just pompous mm-hmm. like this being that walks up and he's just glistening and he's essentially um he's essentially uh fabio he is fabio actually oh he's gotta have the long hair That's- no, I mean it's Fabio. It's actually Fabio. Yeah, I've I've already dude. I've already made. I love the mind. idea of imagine Fabio, but his skin his skin isn't molten. It's not like actual fire, but it glistens like fire. Even if you just say oh. that his skin glistens, his skin is like a dark red and it flickers like fire. Yeah. I think I feel like that conjures a good word picture. But his hair right. is actually like wild, like flame. So it kind of like right, like just has that constant smolder going to it. Plus, yes. you can always have a lot of good emotion with someone who has, like, Hades from Hercules. Like, you could tell his emotions mm-hmm. based on his head, and you can even say that, too. Like, the idea of him being, right. like, really upset and his hair, like, being very bright. Um, but I love that idea. I will say, warning um, to to people who might want to run a session like this, I don't think this Empyrean being this... Uh, and let me know your opinion on this, Cam. I, I think he he can't be unbeatable because your players will vary. Well, he see, here's the thing. Um, Empyreans, they, they don't age, but they can be killed. Okay. But maybe beating somebody isn't necessarily like killing somebody might not be the way to win. Yeah. In this, in this one, maybe, maybe finding the unique way of trying to beat this godlike being in these events, it's I, I view it sort of like the Mighty Ducks. Yes, you know how, uh, like they've got the the Swedish team. Quack. quack. What's up? Quack. 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 <laughs> it's knuckle book time. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So, but like you've got like the Swedish team, and they're like super good, and they're always wearing like the deep black, and they're always just scary looking, and and they're just really really good. And at first, your in in the story case, your players get just absolutely decimated by this guy mm-hmm. in maybe two or three events. And then they collect themselves. And then they start sort of exploring the island after the first day's events. And they learn more about themselves. And they grow. And oh, they dude. are representing the growth side of things. Yep. Well, I love the... Is that- no, no. I love this idea, too. Because, like, going back, the reason I was saying they can't be unbeatable is because I was imagining, like, your poor strength, dude. Have your strength dude do an event and win before the Empyrean shows up. Have at least one strength mm-hmm. event be day one so that player who's invested everything in the strength doesn't feel like, oh, like, I can't beat this guy because he's literally a god. Um, right. So have it be, like, day one, your strength dude kills it. Just destroys the competition. Day two, everyone on the island's then like, well, this guy's the strongest. He can... He can beat this Empyrean, and then your guy loses to the Empyrean because the Empyrean's, you know, a beast. Um, mm-hmm. But then I, I love the idea of, like, going back to this whole idea of hunting hunting a creature. But you you knowing through, like, a shaman talking to your people that it's not hunting a creature and killing it. Uh, sometimes it's hunting a creature and being able to keep it alive. Or like respect it. Right. So I think the the right. Empyrean is just going to come back with this thing dead, and he's just going to drag mm-hmm. it and be like, "I found the creature." Um, right. And then your players, if they come back with this living one, like they'll be the actual victors because they've like right. tamed the creature or or something like that. Yeah. And and the cool thing thematically that fits into that is that he is his own demise. He represents his own demise. Exactly. He is. The the players are about preservation. They're about rebirth. They're not about rebirth. They're about maintaining what already lives. Whereas this Empyrean is so there's such hatred towards mm-hmm. everything and even themselves that they would rather burn it all down. Dude. And that invo- and that is represented through the killing of that animal. What if too so, what if the dragon turtle going back to this idea of what the dragon turtle Mm -hmm. could be is maybe instead of the dragon turtle explaining the things he gives to you maybe you just and honestly this could be for a dm if you've got players who are good just ad-libbing and making stuff up 
Um, maybe the dragon turtle just gives them an object and doesn't explain it. Like you swim up, yes. the dragon turtle like pulls its head up and then like it shakes its back and something washes up to your character and that's what they're supposed to take back. And it could be a coconut for one. It could be a plant. It could be a certain type of rock, whatever. Um, but the players are supposed to, on their swim back, you know, do some meditation, some soul searching and figure out what that right. means to them. And they explain it to a shaman. Now, the Empyrean, he's going to do the same thing. And I can see the Empyrean getting this rock or the stone. And he just like um, turns it to powder. Or I, I see him like it being this black stone. And he just like plops it down in front of the shaman. And the shaman's like, what does this mean? And he's like, it means that uh, the dragon turtle knows that I'm going to win. And he knows that this is going to be the fate of the island is it'll be black like that. And the shaman. Oh, nice. Yeah. And the shaman like shakes his head and he's like, nope. It means that uh, you should understand that sometimes like you must look inward to figure out your value, not at not outward. And then like he takes it and he throws the rock in like a fire. And as the rock starts to refine in the fire, you can see that there's like some gem underneath the stone. So he loses. He, he, he thinks he should win because he went there first and he got back first. But then your players right. step forward and they're like, this coconut means that I've, you know, should drink milk because I'm the wizard and I need stronger muscles. And the, and the shaman's like, yep, good job. You did it. <laughs> but the- so one of your players is all, I got a smiley star <laughs> sticker. I look pretty. And he's all, inner beauty. Of course, of course. That's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> but I think some of your players will. The, the Empyrean just sitting there, and he's like, "What? What are you? What are you talking about?" <laughs> Third player walks up. He's all, "I found a leg," and that's all. No, that's not. That's actually not. That's not yours. That's that. And some guy runs up. He's all, "Where? There's my leg. There's my leg." But I think that'll be. And I think your, some of your players. And there's your single leg. Yeah, I think some of your players will really enjoy that that thinking outside the box and like what does this because you as a dm can probably give your players something that represents them like represents their characters without you saying what it is and then you giving your players the ability to kind of read themselves into that object i think that would be fun personally and and here's what you're getting your players to do you're getting them to ask themselves questions about their character to themselves Mm -hmm. about their characters and when they do that they aren't thinking about life they are living on your table. Exactly. And it's the best place to be. It is. You know, it's so funny. This episode, it it, it started, excuse me for knocking my book around. Um, it started on such an, a cool a, a cool route that I was completely happy with going in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I was super happy with the direction we were taking it. But this diversion is also so much fun it's like a, we are we are living on two sides of an episode right now mm-hmm. which has sort of never happened for us yep i, I, I i'm absolutely loving this episode okay can i br- yet again oh, more ocean stuff by the way oh <laughs> just more we do a lot of stuff, stuff around the ocean um but let me we, let me we, we, let me brain dump some things um just a few things yeah. and then if you if you get anything you interrupt me i think Go so the beginning is awesome i think the end yes um, the end could be just a simple like he returns back to the volcano. There's a big eruption. There's a huge party that night. Some tribal chieftain or something has some kind of artifact, or maybe even the goddess or whatever team you help win. Whether I think your your players have to pick teams as their day one, like as their day one, have them pick teams. Whether it's the life team or the ocean team or the land team right. or whatever. So whatever team they help win, and they can pick individually too, like not be on the same team. Mm-hmm have that goddess show up and give them something give them a magic item mm-hmm. i think there's uh there's pieces of powers or there's there's some kind of small uh, little symbols of like creatures that you can get and that little tiny statue can turn into a creature it's in the dmg i'm sorry i can't really look it up figuring figuring of power that could be what it is that could be a really cool thing for the god to give away as like a as like a prize or as a thank you that way your players do mm-hmm. feel like oh this actually it, we get we still get a reward for all of this stuff and you're 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 right. kind of saying as a DM too, like, hey, I'll reward you if you do more stuff like you did this session. But some other things. Right. Um, going back yeah. to the decathlon, I know we talked about a few things, but this is just a list I had made off of what you had said. Um, if you have some mm-hmm. ideas, can we can flush it out more, or this could be something that Let's you guys it. can flush out. Uh, here's some yeah. some things that you had said about a decathlon, and then some other things I had thrown in. Um, just kind of hearing you talk there is the high jump which could be a great thing for either strength or 
for dexterity. Um, there's a discus yep. throw, which I see being once again strength or dexterity, but that maybe is based off attack rolls. Um, there's a javelin mm-hmm. throw, which I think can be the same thing. Um, there's right. running, which can be either short or long. I think a long run is based off of constitution. A short run, a constitution for yeah, sure. is yeah. based off of dexterity. Uh, swimming, correct, which I think could also be constitution or could be athletics. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Boating. I love the idea of there being some kind of boat race and it being a uh, Matthew intelligence, uh, intelligence, but also maybe even multiple things like, um, yeah, like there's this thing Matt Koval talked about. I think it's from fourth edition, maybe even from 3.5. It's called a skill contest. Um, I've started using them. It's, it's the idea of you put a, you put a scenario before your party and you ask them Mm. using your skills Think of one of your skills and let me know how you're going to use that skill to help you with this scenario. And then your players yes. will pick. So, for instance, with boating, that could be a great skill I was, contest. I was raised on 4E, by the way. That was that was 4E was one of my introductions to D. Yeah. So with a with a boating Clearly. skill contest, you could have your strength guy is going to be like, uh, well, I'm going to use my athletics and I'm going to row this boat. Your bard could be like, you know what? I'm going to – can I use charisma to try to inspire – or like get like a row, row, or like sing a song, and they're like, "Yeah, go ahead, roll charisma." Your your wizard could be like, "I'm gonna a shanty." Yeah, your wizard That'd could be, be so like, awesome. "I'm gonna try to roll intelligence to do this." Your rogue could be like, "Could I use you know this skill to do that?" And have it be like a few rounds of skill contests versus the other boat, and that just simply means I think you have each of your players roll just against another number, like just roll a d20 mm-hmm. and add like four or five to it and have it just work like that but that's boating yeah. um i think some kind of song or dance could be fun even if it's not a competition just the idea of there being some kind of song or dance that they could yeah. be a part of um so you had mentioned animal hunting which i loved mm-hmm. um especially keeping yeah. them alive i thought something that a wizard could enjoy or a ranger could enjoy is the idea of maybe with an intelligence or an animal handling or a nature check uh you know islands are known for new species and you know rapid evolutionary pro- uh, process and stuff like that maybe right it's whoever if anyone can discover a new species um so you could kind of say like hey where would you like to look and then have them roll like you could roll you could look at the waterfall or in this forest or at this little alcove they pick an area mm-hmm. and then you have them roll um that animal handling handling thing yeah uh, there's archery i think the, even the idea yeah. of um being able to meditate or seeing who can stay the longest near an area of smoke or near an area of where there is magma. What about foraging? Foraging for a, a like a, a mythical flower or a mythical you know fruit Dude, or something like it that. It could be, yes. And mixing with that, even the idea of maybe they're cooking as well. Maybe it's maybe Yeah, cooking cooking was definitely the next thing I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, maybe leading up to the the dance, maybe the the event is, hey, over the next, you know, two hours you guys can go out and look for whatever type of fruit or look for whatever you want to make some kind of either dish like food or drink Mm -hmm. and then you have to bring it to the dance and there's like a contest and some people are going to be like dude let's go into the water and try to make sushi some people are going to be like let's go out into the woods and try to get some fruit and you know brew it into something um that could be a cool way of once again doing a skill contest where your ranger's like i'm going to use my skill to forage and your wizard saying, well, I'm going to use my intelligence or my alchemy to to brew or to cook. Yeah, that's cool. Anything pop into your head? Well, those two for sure were the like the ones that would really pop into my head. Surfing was something that oh, I thought, surfing. Was, thought about. Yep. Being, the, being that we're on an island, yep. I thought that would be interesting. Because that's got to be acrobatics for surfing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rock, rock climbing yep. on like an extraordinarily dangerous rock face yep. uh, would be something that, that really came to mind. Um, walking on hot coals. Ooh, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. That that was one thing. Actually, I was inspired. I was looking at our subreddit while I was saying that, and I was inspired by one of your. Looks like a D twelve, maybe a D eight. Um, on the t- on our background picture, it looks like a little hot coal. I thought that was pretty huh. cool. Um, yeah. So stuff like that, like sort of just like the tribal type of events that come mm-hmm. along with it. Like when you said, like a. They say like the hula of of sorts, mm-hmm. where it's like a dance. Um, that's something that would be really really cool. Um, you know, that, that, those are pretty much what I've got uh, for the most part. 
I think cliff diving, maybe diving would be fun. Ooh, uh, yeah. That would definitely be, I would think, a charisma mixed with the dexterity. Um, that's That seems like something that I would like a lot. But yeah, I, I think for the most part, though, like that's some really good events. We have a good end. We have a great beginning as well. We have, uh, I think, a phenomenal middle. I really am excited about that middle. Yep. Um, I love that. I'm all love about that middle. middle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know me. They call me the middle guy. <laughs> the middleman. <sighs> yeah. Hey, it's me, middleman. You might have met my friends, beginning man and end man. End man. Well, <laughs> they're not. They're not that great. I'm the middle guy. Oh, middleman cam um now middleman cam is slowly uh figuring out a way to get to the synopsis while Ooh, not stammering are you the, the synopsis yes, it's my it's my turn Ooh. this week buddy so for those of you guys who don't know at the end of every episode we try to just really me and cam have always enjoyed doing it uh just for you know a minute or so uh, we try to take a picture that's been vivid in our head and just to bring it to life it might be the intro or the outro mm-hmm. or the the middle uh, but whatever whatever is you know most vivid in Cam's mind, he's going to take a second. I'm giving him some time to think. I don't know if he's picking up on this yet, but I'm talking for a little bit to give him some time to you know get there in his head, and then he's going to go ahead and you know take us take us out of this episode with a nice little you know audio yeah. audio uh, audio journey. Cam, Cam, will you take us there? I will take you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... It's it's gonna start like it's it's sort of something we mentioned already inside the at the side of the episode and I'm excited to get into it. So okay. you are on the island experiencing the shot put event mm-hmm. with some of the crew from the Earth, um, the Earth tribe essentially, uh, and they have been showing you the ways of using the momentum because their frail bodies look like they should not be able to move and jettison these these shot puts in towards the distances that they're able to throw them it's it's absolutely insane how strong they actually are but a lot of it comes from the efficiency and maybe there is a lot of strength and efficiency itself and so they, as they're describing these things one of the members of the team is just doing another practice throw and the ball sails to the sky and yet this one's not accompanied by the usual thud this one's accompanied by a quick and hard slap. <laughs> and in that slap, you see a giant of a man. And he looks to you and your crew. And he says, Hmm. Throwing pebbles, are we? <laughs> Is this the, quote, competition? <laughs> He crumbles it in his hands. Dust falls to the ground. (laughs) Should I throw one of these? Or maybe something like this? As he reaches down, grabs a boulder from the ground, and tosses it 100 yards with the flick of a wrist. I guess I'll see you in the competition. And he bumps shoulders and he says, I'm out of here. And then he like pulls his hat backwards and he says, Peace out. Smell nerds. you later. <laughs> Dorks. <laughs> and then he gives them a big wedgie. And all of them. All of them at the same time. He a actually, celestial wedgie. He uses, yeah, he gives them a celestial wedgie. And there's like a bunch of gods. And they're all like snickering. And they're like, ha ha ha. And all your players are just floating in the air hung up by their underwear. Dude. Yep. Okay. That was actually really <laughs> awesome. Like the whole part where you're like throwing pebbles, are we? I love that. Because that's totally how, like, a god would talk. Like... Yeah. I tried to do, like, a god laugh, but I think what I'm actually going to end up dealing with is how to edit that from actually hurting people's ears. So, no, I don't know. Dude, I thought it, it, should, it should be. I thought it was sweet. I seriously thought yeah, it was man. sweet. I... No, the, is this one that you want to run? Like, I, I would love to dude, run this, actually. I, was, I think this would be a lot of well, fun. Well, that's what I was thinking. Is like, I can't... I gotta find a good downtime to have something like this. Because I am... Yeah. I do fall victim to forgetting that my players do need that time and just keeping them going between like, okay, now this city might get destroyed and now there's all these dead people in this one and now there's a plague and now this god's back and he's destroying everything. So I'm like, I need to find time for my players to be able to enjoy just some skill checks, 
and some yeah. good times, have a lot of snacks that night, and just make it a good old, good old D and D party vacation night. No, I'm ex- yeah, I'm excited man. for this one. Yeah, it's gonna. It, it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking at this Empyrean in this book, and I just want to punch him right in the mouth. Mm-hmm. There's something about his face. Let me tell he's, you, he's got a real punchable God. face. But uh, as he's got a real punchable face, <laughs> and be. <laughs> but as always, guys, that's been our episode of filling in the gaps. Uh, if you do use this session, please get on our Reddit, get in our Discord. Uh, it's just uh, what's our what's our Discord name actually? It's filling in the gaps. Oh. Yeah, it's it's exactly that. Uh, they, as it sounds and has it spelled F I L L I N G I N T H E G A. It really is that easy. We're also on Instagram and on Reddit and on YouTube. You can look us up there as well. Let us know if you ran this session or one of our sessions. We love to hear how you guys, we don't want you to necessarily run this verbatim. We love to hear how you guys put your twist on things. Um, also, you can feel free, remember, to check out Libris Arcana Dice. Let us know uh, when you get their product, how much you love it. And if you guys have any suggestions for our next episodes, a uh, random shout out to my little owl, owl bear who gave us so mm-hmm. many yeah. great suggestions. Those were awesome. They were really seriously. Great. And these ones. Okay. One more shout out to the, the guys who brought us this episode. That was who, who were these ideas from again? It, Oh, that's actually going to be from Molly as always our, our discord creator. And, and let's see here. Last but not least, the oh, Bro Diesel. Bro Diesel. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you guys so mm-hmm. much for these ideas. If you guys have ideas for episodes, let us know on Discord. Let us know on our Instagram. Let us know on Reddit. We love the fact that this list is now more full of your ideas than our ideas because it just makes it fun for us. And I know you guys want to hear, you know, you guys have great ideas for sessions. We want to help you flush those out. But as always, thanks again yeah. for listening in. This is Cameron Rich wishing you guys good luck on your next game night.